This is the 11.4 inch infotainment system that you're going to find inside of a number of Jaguar vehicles, as well as some Land Rovers, Range Rovers, etc. There are technically two different screens that are available. So it's a smaller 10 inch or this 11.4 inch. They work virtually identically, but I'm going to walk you through the process on how this works. So starting off, this is typically the home screen that you're going to be met with. Along the very top left hand side there, you can push in order to be able to get to a little welcome screen. Nothing too fancy there. If you had multiple profiles selected, you could change between them. You've got a hot button press to get to navigation, hot button press to get to a phone, for media. There's a little icon view with everything that's available. And then you've also got just your basic home button to get back to this home screen instead. Along the right side, your current time, if you've got anything going on with the vehicle itself, the camera. So if you had the, this one just has the reverse camera, but if you had the full 360 view, that would show up as an available option. The beeping that you get as you back up, you could toggle that off if you wanted to. Then there's also this little gear icon where you can adjust the brightness, toggle the whole screen off if you find it too distracting. You can have it go to an auto theme, so light versus dark, etc. So the auto theme means that it's going to flip between that day or nighttime mode, just depending on how bright it is outside. With the auto brake hold, if you have the vehicle in drive and you take your foot off the brake, if you come to a complete stop, the vehicle is not going to move. And then auto start stop system, that's the one that's potentially going to kill power to the engine if you're stopped for an extended period of time. You can look at audio settings, and this is something that I always recommend you change right away. Drop the treble by two, crank the bass usually by like three to four points. That generally gives you some pretty good audio. Then you can, ah, right from there, you could also adjust out your balance and fade. So if you wanted to have a balance for just the driver versus centered for everybody. And then there are a series of other options that are available here. So you can create unique profiles. Big benefit there is that if there are multiple people driving the vehicle, you can set it up to remember your key fob, your seat memory, and a number of other things like your presets, your phone, etc. So multiple people driving, you absolutely want to go to multiple profiles. So you're going to go all profiles and then just create an individual profile. Different options for connectivity. So you could look at Bluetooth settings, Apple CarPlay settings, Android Auto settings, etc. So some of these things we have to wait until we actually start to connect the uh, phone to the vehicle. Basic wireless options, etc. Moving back into a series of vehicle settings. So you've got service information, driver assistance settings with your cruise control. So you've got a few different types for cruise. So it's either far, normal, or close. So how far or close do you want to be away from the vehicle that's in front of you? Adaptive speed limiter means that if it recognizes that the speed has dropped, it's automatically going to lower your speed if you've got the adaptive cruise control on or not. And then eco coaching if you want to maximize your fuel economy in the vehicle. Different options for parking, so that aid is the beeping that you get as you back up. Rear traffic monitor, so if you start to back up and somebody's coming perpendicular, it's going to let you know of a potential collision, and it can actively brake for you if there's an obstacle behind you. So these are just ge good general safety settings. With collision avoidance, you've got a few options. So if the vehicle senses that there's potentially going to be a collision, it can actively brake for you, or it can just give you a notification to let you know. Driver condition monitor. So if you start to veer over too many times without signaling, it's going to tell you that you should probably take a break. Safety and security. What are some interesting ones there? Two stage unlocking. So when you go to unlock the vehicle using the fob, is it just a single button press to unlock all the doors or is it multi press in order to unlock all of the doors instead? Drive away locking. So when do you want the vehicle doors to automatically lock? Do you never want them to auto lock or when you're at eight kilometers, 16 or 32, etc.? I normally recommend just keep it at the eight. It's general good rule of thumb. Exterior lights, auto high beam assist. So with this one turned on, if you're in your auto light mode, the vehicle is automatically going to turn on the high beams as necessary. If it recognizes somebody's oncoming, it's going to dim them for you and then bring them right back up to that high again. Home lights, when you go to lock the vehicle, do the lamps just turn off automatically? Do they stay on for 30 seconds, one minute, or two minutes instead? Some basic options for convenience settings. So window, you've got the option for global open and close. I definitely recommend keeping these ones enabled because you can use the fob to roll the windows up or down. Let's hop outside and I'll show you how that works. So in order to roll them down, you're just gonna press the unlock button and then hold it. So you're just gonna do a press and hold. Well, watch this. Windows are going down. You can push any button and just pause it part way and then just press and hold again in order to continue the cycle. Look at that. And then it's moving so you can just release it. 
but it's even getting the sunroof open as well. Amazing. Now you could push and hold the lock button if you wanted to close the windows too, but there's also one other way that you can do it. So right on the outside of the door there, there's a tiny little button, a little indentation. You can push that in order to lock and unlock the doors, but if you do a press and hold to lock it, watch this. So do press and hold for a few seconds as long as you've got the key fob on you. Oh yeah. You do have to continue to press and hold there too, which is kind of neat. But I love that it's like a window control for all of the windows and the sunroof. That's really nice. Really straightforward there and said you can do it for both opening and closing mirror dip on reverse so if you're backing up the mirrors are automatically going to lower so your side views in order for you to see what's going on next to you rain sensing wipers and then paddles do you want your paddle shifters to always be active or strictly when you're in sport mode i normally recommend just in regular drive mode so if you ever wanted to use the paddle shifters when you're just regularly driving you could cabin lighting gives you the option of adjusting the actual color there that's kind of neat then you can animate the cabin light just based off of audio there too. And units. Do you want to have it measured in miles per hour, kilometers per hour? Your trip counter. So do you want it in miles per gallon, etc.? How do you want to measure your tire pressure, Celsius or Fahrenheit, etc.? Series of general settings. There aren't too many crazy ones here. Uh, let's see, I guess the big one is going to be wake word. So rather than pushing the voice command prompt in your steering wheel to activate the assistant, you can have it listen to a wake word and then you can create your own what wake you word like to set <laughs> then you can create your own unique wake word if you want to otherwise if you were to say hey jaguar you can have it automatically pop up there for you instead so you could push the voice command prompt on the steering wheel or just have it listen to a wake word instead nothing exciting in media display options for the map do you want to have it for the auto light or dark Stealth mode means that all the lights are going to turn off. Do you want to get clicking? So beeping as you go, yay, nay. Master pin is useful if you're using a valet. So it's essentially going to lock the screen out. So a valet driver can't look through all of the settings. Do you want to adjust the date and time? So you've got a few options there. So auto time means that the vehicle is going to determine what time it should be. Do you want to be in the 12 hour mode versus 24 hours? So military time, etc. How do you want the day to be selected? And then there's also auto time, which if you toggle that one off, you can adjust the timeout yourself. You can select what's going on with your time zone, 20, 12 or 24 hour mode, et cetera, whether or not you're on daylight savings time. Unless you're on a time, like right on the border of a time zone though, I just recommend always keeping it in auto time. System restore, so if you're selling your vehicle, you can bring it back to the factory default screen there instead. Languages, do you want it to be English for, ooh, UK. There's no North American English though. Huh. Interesting. Well, either way. Oh, actually keyboard. That's what I might be looking for. English. US only. No Canada. French Canada. Oh, come on. <laughs> Same difference. And then you've also got options for apps. So apps, you've got a ton of different things. So do you want to have it for auto defrost for the front and for the rear? your unique button on the steering wheel, what do you want it to do? So when you do a short press, do you want to have it cycle through different things? Do you want it to turn on something like your massage seats, your driver's seat, climate settings, etc.? Long press, what do you want it to do? Do you want it to change out media? Do you want it to adjust your cluster screen? Things like that. So that's the button that's right on the steering wheel, but you've got the flexibility of being able to adjust it to do what you want for two different presses. So if you wanted to adjust the layout right there, you can see all of the icons already there. So if we deselected one, you could then add it back in. So if you wanted to customize it, you just deselect whichever ones, and then you can select in order to customize it and change the overall layout there. Low traction launch, whether or not you want help with that launch control. Options for media, so AM, FM, etc. Media player settings, nothing crazy there. Navigation settings, there's some interesting ones here. So auto zoom, as you get closer to your destination, it's going to zoom in or out depending on how close or far you are away. You want to show point of interest icons and nothing crazy there. Do you want the fastest, shortest, or the most eco-friendly route? Do you want to avoid certain things like carpool lanes, ferries, toll roads, and things like that? And that's going to dynamically update the map based off of whatever you've deselected there. Do you want it to learn the route as you drive? Alerts. So as you come up to turns, do you want to have voice guidance on? Yes or no. Or do you want it to just be a chime? And then other one, ah, smart card, Biden's. 
Let's see, otherwise, jumping back, phone, eh, nothing crazy there. Do you want to have it sorted by first name, last name, etc.? Messaging options. Do you want to get message tones when you have an incoming message? If you're driving, do you want to automatically have it respond back with any of these different options there instead? You can also edit out your own template. So if you wanted to create your own message template as a default to send people when you're driving, that's where you're going in order to make it happen. Seats, do you want to have it auto massage? Amazing. And how long do you want the massage to last for when it's turned on? Different options for Sirius XM. So if you've already got a Sirius XM account, you can log in or create a new profile. Then there are some notifications that you can get, etc. So the big one, I guess, is going to be for artists and songs. So if you're listening to an artist or a certain song on Sirius XM, you can save it and get notified whenever that's available again. You can manage notifications, etc. So nothing overly exciting there. Basics for notifications, and then if there are software updates available as well. So I know that's a lot of information for your basic settings there, so let's get to the fun stuff now. But let's go through everything you need to know here. So firstly, you've got your navigation, which you can either press there or press the little nav icon there in order to get to it. You could, if you had a home address there, navigate home, search for addresses, look at previous destinations. So if you click through, you can see places that you've gone. You can swipe across for different point of interest icons, or you can search for an address. You can search by GPS coordinates by going latitude first, longitude second. You can start typing in an address or search for a point of interest icon. So I want to look for Tim Horton, see what's available. So you can see tons of different options. Let's find one that's a bit further away. Hit go. And then you've got there. So you've got the full map that's available. You can go here for settings and avoid carpool lanes, ferries, toll roads, and a ton of other things. Then it's just going to dynamically update the map based off of what you said there. If you've got multiple stops to make along the way, you can then select for a different waste point. So if you wanted to fill up on fuel first before you stop to grab coffee, you can do that. And then you can just exit out, look at routes that are available. So if there are different options to get to your end destination, you find different routes available. Then you can hit done. And then from there, you're set to go, it's actively going. You can simply end the route there and then you've got the destinations that you've traveled to. Along the outside, you've got different headings, so whether that's 2D, 3D, heads up, etc. Really straightforward though, I like that. And then all of, obviously all of your previous destinations, if you wanted to, you could select off to the, or swipe off to the side, I should say, to delete. Or if you wanted to go back to a destination you've been to, set to go and end. So straightforward. And then moving back home, so you could enter in a home address there, so home or work. Big benefit is that you can push the voice command prompt on the steering wheel and say navigate home, navigate to work, whatever the case may be. Back home again, you can search for destinations, look at previous destinations as well. And next up, setting up a phone is straightforward. So you can see there, we're looking to pair a new device and we're looking for PIVI. So I'm gonna connect there, pin numbers match up. Allow contacts and favorites to sync up. I'm gonna say no to that one there. So you can see I am connected. But yeah, there we go. That's what I was waiting for. Wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So in order to set up CarPlay, all we're going to do is hit yes. Do you, want to, do you want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, we want to allow for that. And it should just take a second there. And move through. Beautiful. Look at that. Fully connected. And this is as full screen as it's going to get. So you're always going to have your outside options that are going to show up there. So if you wanted to get into your cameras, etc., you still would have that available as an option. Then along the side, you could launch back into CarPlay there. Inside of CarPlay, you've got what's going on with your current time and connection, which map application was opened last, which audio application, and then which miscellaneous application was last opened. This is going to bring you to the home screen, or you can button press to get to your icon view instead, or you could as easily swipe across either way. Now, it doesn't matter if you're in Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze, so you can move using your finger, but you can't pinch to zoom. You've got to zoom in and out this way instead. You can search for destinations, look at previous destinations, change up your different heading modes and find yourself there if you want. Button press to get back home and Google Maps is the exact same way. So no pinch to zoom, but you could do a drag and drop, zoom in and out this way. And then you can search for addresses that you've been to. Go here in order to change out your route options. So if you wanted to avoid highways, toll roads, ferries, and things like that, look at traffic volume, etc. And then it's the same idea with Waze. So ways you can let people know of an upcoming obstacle, whatever the case may be. If there are cops, you could also search for addresses, destinations, etc. 
Now, one nice thing is that the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, you can do a longer press and hold on it in order to be able to activate your Siri assistant there too, which is great. But everything works so nicely here and it's so beautiful across. You can look at your podcast if you want to. You can see what's going on with different applications, etc. So there's a lot of flexibility here. Through your iPhone, you'd also have the option. So if you go into your settings, general settings, CarPlay, and then you're just going to find your vehicle. So Pivi. You can customize the launcher. You can forget it. Or you can turn off CarPlay when the phone is locked. But if you wanted to customize the screen because, oh, maybe you like using Waze and then you also enjoy listening to your podcasts, you can have those listed first instead. You could also delete a bunch of apps if you didn't want to use them, and it removes them right from the screen, but they are added back on the bottom of your phone there. Now, if for whatever reason you've played around with the layout too much, you don't like what you've done with it, you can reset in order to bring this back to the factory default screen here instead. Pretty nice, back to that main screen, the icon view. So it's very straightforward using this. Pushing this icon does nothing after you're connected other than to launch you back into CarPlay. You can push there in order to jump into your phone and that's right through CarPlay instead. Back home to the main screen. You can look at CarPlay there if you want. You can add in a device or you can just connect. So you can connect to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay but not both at the same time. And then you can't be connected over Bluetooth to stream audio while you're connected to CarPlay. So it's essentially one or the other. So I've just reconnected there. You could add in another device if you want to. You could look at favorites if that was available and then look at all of your previous calls. So it's relatively straightforward adding in a phone that way. Setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So if you weren't on this screen, you're on the home screen, all you're gonna do is just connect phone and then you could easily pair on the phone. You're just looking for heavy 30619. Pins match up, so let's pair. Perfect, Android Auto is available, so select it on the car screen. So gonna go back home, launch into Android Auto there, and fully connected, which is great, look at that. Beautiful. Now you might find that you launch into a screen kind of like this. You can go to an icon view instead, back to this screen. To get the full screen map, you just push the map icon and that stretches it across. Nice pinch to zoom capabilities. You can look at previous destinations, etc. You can avoid things on your route like tollways, motor, motorways, etc. It's tons of different options. It's good. Pushing this back button there gets you back to the home screen, launching back into Android Auto. So straightforward. Now, very similar to the iPhone side of things, you do also have the flexibility of being able to customize the screen a tiny little bit. Not quite as much as on the Apple side, but if you search for Android Auto, go into your Android Auto settings, you can customize the launcher. So you've got all of your different settings that are available there. Now, very different from the iPhone side of things is that this update isn't dynamic. So if we do a drag and drop, it's not actually gonna update the location changes until you get out of Android Auto on both your phone and the vehicle and then launch back into it again. And then any changes that you've made would save in from there. But you can button press, you can push the voice command prompt on the steering wheel in order to activate the Google Assistant there instead. So it's relatively straightforward. And then if you wanted to remove a device, just connect back through. You've got the, oh, go to add device. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Select the device. You can disconnect it if you want to. You've got different device options or you can forget it. And that's fully removed the device from the vehicle. So it's that simple setting up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, etc., inside of the PIVI 11.4 inch screen. That's the basics of setting up a phone. Next up is going to be media. So media there, actually it's kind of neat because even when you look at the basic screen, you can push the little icons to go between all of your different options there. So AM, FM, Sirius XM. If you had a USB stick available, that would also be there as an option. So it's essentially whatever sources you currently have enabled for the vehicle. So you can easily button press to get in. You can easily mute out there too, or push the little star icon. Oh, presets not available. Okay, so let's go through right now and click on media there. That's gonna give us this full screen media. As you can see, ton of different stations that are available. So it's every station that's available based off of where we are. So if you wanted to save any of these things out as an available preset, all you're gonna do, you see this little star icon, find whatever station that you wanna save, and then all you're gonna do, push the little star icon. Now, if you go back home, push the little icon, and then it shows your different presets that are available. 
why isn't that working? It's because none were saved, but it's relatively straightforward. You can go in and you can save or unsave as many as you'd like to. You can look at favorites, look at player, back to stations again. Relatively straightforward. Nice. Then you can click through either one and then you're playing there. Just go to the generic player instead. Now this looks very different because if you click on the top, you could add in a device if you've got a Bluetooth device, Sirius XM or AM, FM, etc. So you're going to change it to Sirius XM for a second. And then from there, you can save this station as a favorite if you want to. Chris Brown is playing, so if you wanted to save him as an artist or the song itself, you can do that. So whenever the artist or the song is playing on any station, it's going to notify you to let you know. So it is kind of nice you've got that available. You can look at favorites, browse for, for, your, for you pages, sports, search. You've got related stations. Oh, of course, active connection necessary, but you can see there a ton of different options that are available like that. It's nice. And then actually I saved another station there. Okay, so it does look like that's the case. So it does save presets for each individual one. So AM, FM, Sirius, XM. So it doesn't lump them all together. But as you kind of move through AM, FM, etc., you can go between all of your previously saved presets there, which is kind of nice. Next up, driving style. So you can see there, zeroed out economy because I am stopped. So as you start to drive, you'll be able to see what's going on with your average speed, driving score, etc. Along the very bottom, you can see your energy impact. So AC obviously is blasting right now, but if you had your heated steering wheel going, if you had your heated ventilated seats going, etc., that's going to show you how much power is currently currently being used. Also a series of eco tips. So if you wanted to see how you could get the most fuel efficiency out of your vehicle, this is where you're going in order to make it happen. It gives you a lot of pretty useful tips and suggestions. Then you can look at your overall vehicle history to see what you're currently getting across the board for your ratings. So if you're like re really like eco-conscious, you want to get the best possible performance out of your vehicle, you can go through your different style. Or you can go through your history there to see how you've been doing overall. Energy impact, which we've already seen. So that's going to be how much each thing is using. So if you had obviously like AC blasted, whatever the case may be. So we go like AC blast that should. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, craziness. So you can see how that affects what's going on with your energy usage as you use everything. Hopping back home brings us back to this home screen. Then you can also edit out. So if you wanted to edit out each individual section, you could customize it a little bit. And then you've got this button. So this little icon view in order to get to all of these other options. So you can hop into your navigation if you want to, or go into accounts, seats, oh, seats. So nice. You've got the option for seat heat if you wanted to turn that on. Also massage chair capabilities. So you could toggle on the driver passenger massage seats. And then there are a few different options. So do you want it to be a wave, up and down, upper back, lower back, and then the intensity. It feels really, really nice. Oh yeah, that's good. And you can toggle it off there. Back to seat heat. And that's the same for the driver and for the passenger side. So you could turn on one seat or the other if you want to. Next up is going to be climate settings. So for climate, it's just basic. Do you want to go into your windshield face or feed? There's a series of different buttons down the center stack there as well that you can adjust out for your basic climate settings. I'll touch on those in a second. Options for camera. So this one, just your backup camera. But if you had the full 360 view, that would also show up. Going back, valet mode. So with valet mode, you enter in a four digit pin and that's going to lock the screen out. Big benefit there is that if you hand your keys off to a valet driver or if it's parked, even for just general security, you could put yourself into valet mode. So if some, your vehicle stolen, then they wouldn't be able to look through all of your previous, previously saved destinations and things like that. You could look at all of your eco data, which again, we've already seen that. Dynamic data. Oh, this is so good. So do you want your steering gear shifting suspension to be dynamic? So more of like a sportier performance or do you want it to be more like comfort? Best example I can give you there, like steering is a good one. So with your steering wheel throw, do you want it to be like more of a throw to go? Or do you want it to be dynamic, so stiffer? Same idea with your gear shifting. Do you want to be able to shift gears out yourself? Yay, nay. Suspension, do you want it to be more of like a relaxed suspension or less sportier suspension instead? It's kind of cool that you can adjust out all of the dynamics for each individual aspect, though. I like that. If you're racing, you want to see what's going on with your different laps, boom. You could do that if you want to. Kind of nice. You can do like an A-B timer, too, to see if you've gotten faster best laps, worst laps, etc. You can reset all of your data. 
And then you've also got your G-force meter there too. There's a pedal graph or a traditional graph there instead. There's also a low traction launch that's available. So if you don't have as much traction because you're in slippery conditions, snowy conditions, whatever the case may be, you can activate that to give you better feel for the suspension and for the driving dynamics. Options for the voice, you've got phone commands. Oh, that's so good. So one of the nice things here is that the voice command prompt, it, like it lets you do so many different things. And this shows you everything that you can do. So you could change out MP3s if you want to, AM, FM, if you wanted to change stations, if you wanted to do other things like if you wanted to navigate using your voice, if you wanted to change your temperature, increase, decrease fan speed, if you wanted to turn on your heated, cooled first row seats. So you could push the voice command prompt. Cooled seat on. Oh yeah, and you can see there, so it turned it on there. Oh yeah, and it's going nicely. So you can see that it did adjust and turned on the ventilated first row seat for us. So you would have the flexibility of adjusting so many different things using your voice. So one thing I'd recommend is that if you just grab one of these things, go through the voice options, see everything that you can do because there is so much that can be done. Rather than fiddling with dials and things like that, you can just use your voice instead. We've already seen connecting in a phone, no phones connected because we've gotten rid of the phones. Media options, cabin lighting where you can adjust out different cabin lights. And then you've also got all surface information. So you can see what's going on with your steering angle as you go. I wish it would show you the actual percentage turned. It doesn't look like it does, unfortunately, though. And then you can see which wheel is getting which amount of power on each side. What gear you're currently in. So if you're in park, drive, reverse, etc. Very straightforward. Oh, that's kind of nice. And then it tells you what each individual mode does. So comfort mode versus eco versus ADSR. So rainy, slippery conditions, things like that. You can have this mode going. And that's kind of cool because it's done right through the center stack. There's a button that you can push in order to jump between different modes there too. I know there's lots and lots of information there, but that's everything that you need to know about the PIVI 11.4 inch screen inside of Jaguar and Land Rover, Range Rover vehicles.